In fifth grade, it's Mrs. Seals back for our next science lab. So last week we were talking about um, one change that happens on the earth, which was sedimentary rock formation. Today we're going to be talking about another process that happens, and this is fossil fuel formation. So let's go ahead and get started. Your target says I can explore the processes that led to the formation of fossil fuels. So let's start out by asking what are fossil fuels? Fossil fuels are formed over millions of years from the remains of ancient plants and animals. So that's why they're called fossil fuels because they come from um, the decayed remains of plants and animals that lived hundreds of millions of years ago. And there are three fossil fuels that we um, talk about, which are coal, oil, or you may hear it called petroleum, and natural gas. So let's start out by talking about how coal was created. There's three main steps that um, go into coal formation. Step number one is that remains of plants accumulated in a wet swampy environment and the plants were unable to decay because there was not a lot of um, oxygen present in the water. There wasn't, this wasn't like clean, fresh flowing, you know, rivers. This was like a swamp where the water is very still and stagnant and muddy and dirty. So when the plants died and fell into this water, they just kind of sat there. Nothing really happened to them. They couldn't decay. And over many, many years, the layers of these plant remains accumulated. So more and more plants started dying and laying on top of each other. And they also got covered up by layers of sediment or sand or rocks or dirt. And over time, this created lots of heat and pressure, which led to the formation of what we call peat. And over millions of millions of years, the intense heat and pressure caused the peat to change into coal. So it's kind of similar to sedimentary rock formation. Um, However, the, a big difference that you need to make sure you understand is that in fossil fuel formation, there is heat involved. In sedimentary rock formation, there is no heat involved. You just have the pressure from the sediments pushing down and compacting the sediment. In fossil fuel formation, because these things are coming from what we call organic matter, which are things that used to be living like plants and animals, there's a lot of energy stored inside of them. So this, this is what creates the heat. And then plus all the pressure of the sediment pushing down, the heat and pressure together are what turn the, what turn these decompose or these um, dead plants and animals into fossil fuels. So one more time, uh, large plants died, fell into stagnant water, over many, many years were covered up by more dead plants and layers of sediment and sand and rocks. The intense heat and pressure turned the dead plants into peat. And then over many, many years, more intense heat and pressure turned the peat into coal. So here's a little visual for you that shows that this happened hundreds of millions of years ago. There are the plants. The plants were buried under water and dirt. Heat and pressure turned them into peat and then coal. So let's talk about oil and natural gas. And the reason we're talking about oil and natural gas together is because they were created um, in the same way, which is similar to coal. The main difference is that coal was created by plants and these oil and natural gas are created from the remains of microscopic plants and animals such as plankton or phytoplankton. And when they died, they settled at the bottom of the seafloor and again, over years and years and years became buried and covered up by layers of sediment and sand and many layers of sediment accumulated, again, creating intense heat and pressure and turning these into coal and natural gas, again, over millions and millions of years. So the main difference here is that coal um, came from 
large plants, like they were described as ferns. They're described as, they're not like plants we really have on earth anymore today. They were really, really large ferns. Um, so coal was created from plants, oil, and natural gas created from microscopic ocean plants and animals such as plankton. Um, here's a little visual for petroleum and natural gas formation that shows the marine plants and animals died and were buried over on the ocean floor over millions of years. The remains were buried deeper and deeper by the sediment. Again, we have heat and pressure turning them into oil and natural gas. So a couple of notes about fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are a non-renewable resource, which means that they cannot be replaced within a person's lifetime. Once we run out, we cannot get more. Since they come from plants and animals that lived, you know, hundreds of millions of years ago, they're not easily replaceable. We can't just go get more. Um, as a society, we are very dependent on fossil fuels. We make lots of things from fossil fuels. The gasoline we put into our cars is made from petroleum. Anything we use that's made from plastic or styrofoam, which is a lot of things that we use, is made from petroleum. Um, coal is burned to generate electricity for our homes and schools and other buildings. Natural gas is also used to heat our homes, and some people use it um, on their stoves, if you have a gas stove. So we use it for lots of different things. But the thing is that when we use fossil fuels, it adds pollution into our environment. And it's and that pollution that is created and added into our atmosphere has been proven to be a leading cause of global warming. It's raising the temperature of the earth, which has a lot of very devastating effects for plants and animals and humans. So um, a lot of scientists are trying to come up with what we call alternative energy sources, which is where they're using things like solar energy, hydro energy, which is from water, wind energy, geothermal energy, which is using the heat from the earth as an energy source, um, bio, biofuel. All of these are what we call alternative energy sources or clean energy sources. And the reason they're called clean energy sources is because using them does not add pollution into our environment the way that burning fossil fuels does. So there are lots of scientists out there right now who are trying to figure out ways to be to make us as a society less dependent on fossil fuels, more dependent on um, clean energy sources like sun, wind, water, the heat from the earth, all of those things. So um, today's activity, the kids in class will be doing this. If you're at home and you have these supplies, this is something you could do with a parent's permission or you can just kind of watch. And this is modeling coal formation, which um, the point of this activity is to show that as layers and layers of sediment pile on top of the coal, the coal, the volume of the coal gets reduced and all the pressure kind of compacts it and squeezes it together. So in, I have this water bottle that I cut the top off of inside of it. I have some cotton balls that I've um, also gotten wet and I put some water in there. And then on top, I have this circle that's like this plastic grate. It comes from this material that I cut a circle on top of. And so what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to, we're going to be um, using this coal, or sorry, we're going to be using this, the cotton represents the coal. So I'm going to measure the size of the coal right now, then I'm going to be adding some layers of sediment on top and measuring to see how the volume of the coal is reduced as the sediment is pushing down on it and kind of squeezing it or compacting it together. Okay, so I have a ruler here. I'm going to use the centimeter side. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to take a Sharpie 
and mark where I'm measuring from because this thing isn't completely flat. And I wanna make sure I'm measuring from the same place each time. So I'm gonna measure from right there. Okay, so um, my starting size of my coal is 5.1 centimeters or five and one tenths centimeters. So let me record that on my paper five and one tenth centimeters. Okay, so I'm going to be adding two scoops of sediment at a time. After the two scoops, I'm going to measure the size of the coal. So I will be adding a total of 12 scoops of sediment. Um, and you're going to notice that as the layers pile on top, the, the coal gets compacted and squeezed together. At the end, I'm going to try to get the coal out so we can look at it and see how much more compact it is. All right, so let me add two layers of sediment or two scoops of sediment. There's one and two. My two layers of sediment on top, pushing down on my, my coal. Let me find the spot I marked. And get my ruler. Now we are at Four point eight centimeters, four and eight tenth centimeters. So I started at five point one. Now I'm at four point eight. All right, so let's add two more scoops of sediment. All right, let me get my ruler. And now I am at 4.6, 4 and 6 tenths. So I started at 5 and 1 tenth, then went to 4 and 8 tenths. Now I'm at 4 and 6 tenths. All right, let's add two more scoops of sediment. One, two. I have my sediments really piling up, pushing down on my coal. Where is my measuring spot? There it is. And now I'm at 4.4. So it seems like each time, with the exception of the first one, I am going down about two tenths of a centimeter. All right, um, let's see, we have six more scoops to do. Let me add my two more. Now we are at eight scoops of sediment, pushing down on our coal, compacting it. And it looks like 4.2 again, with our two tenths of a centimeter each time. All right. Let me add two more. One, two. Ooh. All right. Hopefully I can fit two more. All right, there's 10 scoops of sediment pushing down on our coal. Uh, now I am at 3.9, 3 and 9 tenths centimeters. All right, let's see if we can fit two more scoops in here and do one final measurement. All right, ooh, it's full. And our final measurement with 12 scoops of um, sediment, 3.8 centimeters, three and eight tenths centimeters. So I started, my coal was five and one tenth centimeters. And now with 12 scoops of sediment pushing down on it, we are now at, 
the size of our coal is three and eight tenths centimeters. So what I'm gonna do now, so we can see how hopefully compact and tightly um, pushed together the, the coal is, I'm going to dump this uh, sediment back into my little tub of sediment. And I have some paper towels here. I'm going to try to get out my hole here all stuck together, which is what we want. All right, here we go. So here's our coal. So you can see through the process of the layers of sediment piling up and pushing down. And remember, since this is organic matter, since coal, you know, comes from dead trees and plants, um, there's a lot of energy in it. So over the time with the pressure of the sediment pushing down and the energy from the decay or from the, the dead organic matter, that's going to create a lot of heat. And between the time and the heat and the pressure, we are, you know, over millions and millions of years going to get coal. All right. I hope that you had fun learning about fossil fuel formation. And I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye.